Hey everybody, we got us a good show today. So the question is, are sellers and investors, are they just absolutely dumping homes out on the market? And, you know, really at, at the end of the day, are we seeing hundreds of thousands of dollars just being thrown at buyers just to entice them to come in and, and buy a home? Their home to be exact. Is that really what's happening? <laughs> I am humored sometimes at what I read. We're going to go over that. We're going to go over some metrics. Hey, uh, the really cool part is we're going to go over uh, a couple of questions because some of you have been asking me uh, to clarify when I say putting your home in the MLS is not marketing, what does that mean? And so we're going to, I'm going to answer the question. There's actually that I'm shocked at how many people are actually asking that question uh, because sometimes, you know, when you're in an industry, when you're in doing things, uh, you know, you don't, it, it, it just doesn't, you know, say, hey, you know, this is different, this is unique. So we're gonna be able to answer that question. I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail. There's no selling. I'm just gonna show you some metrics and what you should be looking for. All right, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the National Association of Realtors. National Association of Realtors does a lot of, well, they do a lot of polling. They do a lot of, uh, you know, inquiries with buyers and with sellers so that they can get, you know, uh, metrics to say, hey, here's what's trending. As an example of the total mortgage demand that uh, increased 1.2% last week, uh, the average 30-day fixed rate mortgage made the largest weekly drop since 2020. So what's really interesting is this, right? So we saw and we know that rates are publicly traded. Remember, the feds have nothing to do with rate. But this last week, uh, they had the, what we call the better than normal uh, stats that came out. And so then all of the investors, and it kind of, you know, it's like a turtle, right? They're like, okay, is it, is it okay to come out? Uh, and then they move out of bonds and move out of treasuries and they move into other stocks and, and whatnot that are out there. And then when, you know, crisis hits, whoop, they pull their head back in again. Uh, and which means that they go into bonds and they go into treasuries. So understand, we're going to get a really important number, in fact, two of them this week, uh, dealing with, you know, like CPI, the cost price index. Uh, one is going to be on supply. The feds like to watch that one a little bit more because they take a look at manufacturing. This last week, manufacturing numbers actually performed really well. And therefore, people pulled out of the treasuries and the bonds into the market and then interest rates go up. Okay, well, it does that every single week. So will we pop back down again? Uh, more than likely, yes. Uh, as we kind of hit into some of these uh, summer months, as we get through and uh, our next uh, vacation slash trifecta of, of what we call the real estate ghost town. And some of you say, well, what does that mean? Okay, well, let's take a look at some of the numbers. I'm going to walk you through this. So you might remember that the end of May through technically the July 4th weekend, there's, there are two vacations. You have Memorial Day, you have July 4th, you have kids getting out of school, you have vacation. It's called the real estate ghost town. It's seasonally normal that it, boom, it just goes away. Post July 4th, however, the market picks up and it picks up significantly. Why? Because people are wanting to get established. They're, you know, it's beautiful weather. It's time, good time to buy a house and all that. And that will always pick up till about, uh, I would say late August when, yes, you guessed it. We have uh, Labor Day weekend. We have students getting going back to school. We have last minute vacations and we got people having, you know, hey, winter's coming. I need to go out and play. OK, so then all of a sudden boom, we hit that slowdown or the second real estate ghost town. And then uh, towards the really at the end of September, after everybody's kind of adjusted uh, as we head into October, boom, the market takes off again. Now, if you take a look at this, this is a very clear indicator because remember, we had gobs and gobs of homes coming on market. That was clear, where my numbers go, up here. When we take a look at the difference between July and August, and we take a look at up here, we can see that we had a ton of homes coming on market, which is normal, right? But 
the pendants were lagging. Well, that's normal. They were lagging till after July 4th. And as expected, <laughs> even some of our clients are like, wow, that's amazing. 30% increase in showings, 28% increase in showings. Some area, 15% increase in showings immediately after July 4th weekend. It's normal, right? We have pendants. Pendants for the last three weeks have been above the number of new homes going on the market. We've been pulling part of that inventory back off. Now, solds, you might be saying, oh my gosh, George, the solds should be up with, with the pendant. Yes, but you're always looking 30, 30 days you know, behind. You're always looking in the rear view window with solds because they're 30 days ago. And it takes a while because it's, uh, it's kind of like a train, man. You put on the brakes, <laughs> it takes a long time for that to happen, right? And then boom, all of a sudden it takes off again. Again, it's that lagging number. So these are dynamic. This is a lagging number. This is gonna be hitting super well because when we come up here, just looking at the first part of July and the first part of August. Here's a, and the reason I pulled these up, when we're not far enough into August to get you some really year over year numbers, except for what's over here. But when we look at this, just in the few, first few days, we're uh, active inventory is up 18.7. To give you perspective, that's 11,007 homes versus 13.9. Okay, that's about right. This is, this is pre-pandemic numbers. Those are pre-pandemic numbers. Those are normal. Oh my gosh, finally normal, right? Right here, normal. So you see the light green is number of homes active, the dark green is sold. Notice it is different than the other side, which is dark greens are higher than the light green. That is abnormal. We've only seen that since June, July of 2020 until, well, about May of this year. So again, it's not that our market is going in reverse. It's not that we're, we're diving down, we're not chasing things down to the bottom. We're getting back to normal, okay? So it's kind of like if you're running, if you're jogging along, right? And all of a sudden you sprint, just because you go back to just a normal jog, that doesn't mean that you're going backwards, okay? It just means your sprint is done. And many buyers out there are saying, oh, thank goodness, finally. <laughs> Uh, which is true because I buy into that. Then when we come over here, we look at new, but look, new is up 122%. That's about 2,000 homes. We have seen a big influx of sellers coming out of the market. Again, seasonally normal. Post July 4th, absolutely seasonally normal. Then, but look at here, uh, pendant are up 63%. That's the difference between 868 versus 1,415. That's a big jump, okay? Here we have 60% increase in solds, 669 versus 1,415. Remember, that's in the lag. So this number is going to outperform. You are going to continue to see that until, yes, almost September when we get back into Memorial or Labor Day, when I always get those two tossed around. As we get closer to Labor Day, sellers pay attention. <laughs> it's going to slow down a lot. People are going to be on vacation. They are going to take last minute vacation. September is not a great month for real estate because people are, their mindsets are elsewhere. Kids are getting back in school. Students getting back in school. Got to get my last minute vacation. I got to go do this. I need to go do that. Hey, I got to get my house ready for the, for the fall. All kinds of things happen. Real estate is not top of mind, especially if interest rates are still floundering and bobbling around. But keep in mind, when you take a look at these numbers, our interest rates, you know, they've been going, you know, fours, fives, fours, fives, fours, fives, right? You've been seeing that, and they are not pulling back. Well-priced homes are still selling incredibly well. Keep that in mind. Let's get into that. So, uh, NAR did uh, some studies here. Oh, before I do that, uh, uh, John asked, he said, George, you guys were talking about mortgages and you were talking about a, a seven, six arm and, and what did that mean? In fact, uh, he just sent me a message this morning. What does that mean to have a seven and six? Okay, super simple. Where's my bench? A seven and six arm, okay, let's go over here. These are 30 year rates. They popped up just a tad bit. 
Same thing with none unoccupied. Next week, probably go back down. If we get some really CPI bad news, uh, they'll go back down again into the fours. All right. A seven and six. So it look like this. It'd be a seven, six, R, right? What this means is it's going to be fixed for seven years. After the seventh year, which is the eighth year, it's going to adjust every six months, whatever that part pricing is, to a degree, to a degree. Man, an arm can only go up so much each step, okay, so that they don't financially devastate somebody. Plus, there's also a, many of them, I think almost all of them, but many of them, they have a maximum cap that they can uh, go up also. So anyway, there you go. That is what a 7.6 arm is. If you have any other questions, you know, definitely reach out to me. Uh, great options if you're not going to stay in your home for, you know, longer than 7 to 10 years. No reason to pay 30-year money for that because it's a lot cheaper. Uh, normally, 7.6 <clears throat> arm, uh, you look at when it's between 3 quarters of a point, a percent, well, 3 quarters of a percent, 0.75, uh, to one point lower in rate than 30-year money because, remember, it's based on risk. So if you're going to stay in your home for less time, then that's something to consider. Now, when you are evaluating that, be honest with yourself because <laughs> as, a, as many of us are going, I can't believe it's August. <laughs> it was just January a couple of months ago. Uh, time goes faster. And when you're in a home, you'll be you know, like, oh, you know, this is great. Oh, my gosh, I'm at the seven-year mark. Oh, what happened? Where did it go? And I say that all the time, <laughs> especially as uh, my nephews grow and make me feel older. So anyway, with that, uh, NAR, they did a study and they said, uh, you know, and they talk about websites and we talk about everything else that's, that's going on. 73% uh, of buyers interviewed, just one agent. 73% of buyers interviewed one agent, okay, during their home search. And that agent was chosen based on their honesty and trustworthiness. Those traits ranked above experience, which is good. Uh, experience does play a big role in things. Uh, it's nice to, to trust that those three things really uh, are probably the three top things. But it's interesting that that's what they said. Uh, now, understand, I don't know what the exact number is, but normally they are uh, calling 10, 20, 30,000 people. It's not a small group. It's normally a pretty vast number. All right, 90%, I love this one, 90% of all home sellers worked with an agent to sell their home. In these instances, the reputation of an agent outweighed their perceived honest and trustworthiness. I thought, really? That's interesting. Uh, I mean, even I am sometimes surprised. But get a load of this. 60% of buyers were married couples. That's what it says. Sixty percent of buyers were married couples. Well, does that mean they're no longer married? <laughs> it's not what they're saying. But anyway, I thought that was funny. Shouldn't it say that sixty percent of buyers are married couples? Since that, you know, I don't know. I don't know. There's, I'm sure, uh, Linda Alley's out there, who's, uh, you know, my my English major who uh, critiques my uh, my information, when I, which I love, love, love. Hey, Linda, shout out to you. Uh, she, she will probably post some kind of comment for me. Anyway, but get a load of this. Girls are better than boys. Now, most girls are out there going, yeah. Okay, 19% of buyers were single females, okay? But only 9% were single males. So, dudes, man, you got you to gotta, you gotta get, you gotta get on the ball, man. Quit, going, <laughs> go out, quit buying toys and uh, buy yourself an investment. Uh, and let's see here. Another 9% were unmarried couples. Okay, that's awesome. All right. Now, understand, they said that no matter the buyer's age, okay, doesn't matter if you're an 18 to 95-year-old. Didn't matter, right? Okay. The internet is the most common tool in the home search. No kidding. Okay. Well, that's a given since pretty much everything on real estate can be online. Now, I say can be because we're going to talk a little bit about and answer the question that many of you have been asking Putting your home in the MLS is not marketing. What does that mean? We're going to go over that. It says, okay, so uh, buyers say that virtual open houses and virtual listing appointments and current news 
as the least helpful on these sites. Least helpful, meaning that they're not providing it, meaning it's not accurate. Well, the good news is that you're here and you're watching this. So make sure you subscribe, share this information. Knowing what's going on and knowing what to expect, that's huge. If you guys know that we're gonna start hitting a real estate ghost town uh, here in the next few months as a seller, that's gonna be super important for you. As a buyer, you know that there's great opportunity because we also know that our inventory just went up significantly, which gives you more options, right? Yeah, there are sellers out there that are offering a lot of different things. Uh, I saw four of them said, hey, $25,000 uh, buyer credit to help buy down rate. Okay, why don't you just reduce your price? Remember, there's three reasons a home doesn't sell, okay? Price, <laughs> location, and then of course, uh, floor plan and, and, and condition of your home. Three reasons, price fixes all of those, okay? And there is a price that buyers will consider. And we can go over the, we can go over that metric later. But anyway, staying on track. The key thing is when they talk about putting your home in the MLS is not marketing. What does that mean? Okay. NAR helps solve this little answer, right? Or question, I guess, provided an answer. And with that, you can see that it says methods of real estate agents use to market. Note this finger right here, right there. I'm not sure why it's not in red, but it says this is your average agent. These items right here, which as you can see, go from 86% to 42%, okay? Average agent. That means that they put it in the MLS. That's a given. Uh, they put up a yard sign. They put it in realtor.com, the real estate agent's website, Third-party aggregators. Third-party aggregators would be like your Redfin, your Trulia, your, your Zillow, Realtor.com, if, if and or anybody else who syndicates, right? Meaning they don't do it, that it automatically happens, okay? An open house and in in the real estate company website. That's between 86% and 42%. It's your average agent. That's what most agents are doing out there. What I'm saying is that's not enough. Putting your home in the MLS and, and having those things happen, they just don't do it. You know, they just put it in the, the MLS or they do what we call the four P's, okay? They put up a sign, they put it in the MLS, they put it on a key box and they pray that it sells. The four P's. It doesn't work. Okay, it works in from <laughs> June, June 2020 till about January. That, then it worked, maybe even March of this year. That may have worked, right? You could fog a mirror and sell real estate. That's not what marketing is. Now, the next series, which then we drop down to 22%. We take a massive haircut right after the, I put it into my, my the real estate firm, okay? The real estate firm, Bentley Properties is a firm, their website, right? After we get past that, we drop down to 22%. 22% says social networking. That means uh, I'm going to post it, you know, with my friends on, and I'm going to let others know, you know, by telling them, okay? Uh, let's see, a virtual tour, that drops down to 21. Videos, 13%, only 13%. That, to me, is crazy, right? Direct mail, that drops down to not 7%. Other websites and other listings, that's 7%. To me, that should be 100% all the way down, 100%. All of those things are a given if you're going to be marketing real estate. The top 1%. Top 1%, they actually do uh, online classified ads. They do print media still. They do magazines, uh, online magazines. In other words, paying to play, putting it, play, paying to put it out in front of other people, including video hosting sites, TV, and then other, uh, all of those things getting you those things which seem common sense to you you're like dude yeah you should be putting it uh paying it to to pay to play right but paying it to to be out in front of people whether it's google whether it's paying whether it's yahoo whether it's facebook whatever that is youtube paying to get it out there it's again it's like having a store just because you put your product in the store doesn't mean it sells the average agent out there says i'm going to put my uh 
I'm going to put my, uh, my product in the MLS, which is the store, and you hope for the best. That's not what you should be doing. You need to be proactively marketing. You have to be out there giving eyeballs on the property. And if you're not, you're just, you're just laying in wait and then you're coming up with crazy ideas and you're, you're just shooting from the hip as to what should happen. So if you have questions, hey, NER's got some great information. It's free for you to look at. If you have questions, feel free to ask us. But really, at the end of the day, make sure that when you are interviewing whomever you're going to interview, make sure that you look at truly what are they doing? What is their budget and how are they proactively doing it? And then have them show you metrics of results. Okay? If you need to know what they look like, I'll send some to you. All right. When we take a look at the market as a whole, sure, this number looks crazy high. Uh, that just shows you how, how low our inventory was. But right now, it's super awesome, okay? New on market, we're only up 2.7% year over year. Sales and uh, pended, yes, they're absolutely down. Not abnormal this time of year. Not abnormal based on the fact that we've had a huge interest rate increase. But understand, the buyers are there, guaranteed. When we talk about marketing, when we're running uh, an updated 30 second video and we piggyback that off of an ad and we go back in and we watch the activity in the MLS of views, we can show people, look, hey, here's the date that they publish and watch this, boom, they just go way up. What that tells you is that the buyers are looking, they're still there, they're gun -gun, kicking the tires. When that value, that perception of value equals, in other words, when their big stack of money equals the big stack of benefit of your house, they will buy it, okay? But you have to get that match. If you're way up here and the buyers are down here, it's not gonna match, okay? They're not gonna buy it. They'll, they'll look at it, they'll kick the tires, and I'm gonna go any further, okay? All right, every buyer that comes through your property is of extreme value. Any buyer that goes through right now that seller is of extreme value because they're also becoming more realistic, which is huge because now we're getting away from and we're deviating from the sprint and getting back to the normal job, okay? All right, if you have any questions, reach out. Make sure you subscribe, share this. It, this metric helps, when you share, it helps the metric to, to give it to others so they can make a really good business decision. That's all this channel is. If you have any questions, reach out. We love, love, love questions. We normally get back to you within about 30 minutes, except for on Sunday. And uh, if you have any any questions, do that. Uh, I will do a video for you too many times, or I'll just you know answer your question here. In the meantime, have a beautiful day. It is absolutely stunning outside. And uh, stay safe. In the meantime, I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.